I'm Alexis with the Utah Assistive Technology Program, and today we're going to spend a few minutes taking a look at LAMP Words for Life. LAMP Words for Life is an AAC app developed by PrentKey Romic Company, PRC, um, for sale on the iOS App Store for $299. Um, LAMP stands for Language Acquisition Through Motor Planning, and this is a pretty unique app in that rather than utilizing strictly categorical or activity-based language. Um, it utilizes this concept of semantic compaction. Semantic compaction is one of three ways to represent language on AAC systems. There is text-based representation, which is exactly what it sounds like, um, utilizing orthographic or um, letters, um, strictly text. There is single message symbols or single meaning symbols, which is um, one of the most common ways to represent language in AAC systems. And then there is this idea of multiple meaning symbols. So semantic compaction utilizes a single symbol, for example, an apple with an A on this home page to access not just apples, as it would be for a single message symbol representation, but to access eat, um, so verbs, adverbs, hungry, as well as some sensory words and then more specific nouns and fringe vocabulary. This use of multiple meaning symbols represented on the home page allows a lot of language to be available on an 84 location page set and it also enables the individual to um, more quickly and efficiently access um, semantically related words. This idea of semantically related words just means words that are related by meaning. Although it takes some um, more initial input on the user's end to learn these relationships, um, once learned, they do follow an intuitive pattern um, because they are meaning-based. Words are stored in semantically related categories with all of the different grammatical components needed to generate a sentence on that page. Um, the motor planning aspect of language acquisition through motor planning refers to the fact that um, the motor plan or the motor the gestures used to access the buttons are going to remain consistent every single time that you access that word. Um, this varies from some programs in which the same word is stored in multiple places within the app. Um, in LAMP, each word is available in only one location in the app. Once you navigate to it and make your selection, it pops you back out to the home page. And this helps the user um, to have a consistent motor plan each time they access that button. Um, it's been shown that utilizing um, these features allows an individual to communicate um, more quickly um, and without even looking at the app in some cases once they become incredibly proficient. There are a few different vocab options available within LAMP. Um, all of the options are going to use PRC's Unity language as their underlying language system. Um, however, you can decide whether you want to use a one hit, a transition, or the LAMP um, Words for Life full. There is also a Spanish-English option available um, with a variety of um, Spanish voices as well as the English voices um, if that option is something that your student or um, ASC user needs. We're going to first take a look at the LAMP Words for Life one hit as this would be where you would start typically with a user. Um, so the LAMP Words for Life one hit is set up exactly like the transition and the full. So as the user moves through the different levels, their motor plan remains consistent in the way that they access the language. However, everything is available in only one hit. There are no sub pages that the user is going to be drawn to. While this does limit the language available, um, you only have access to these 84 buttons on the screen. It's a great way to train initial use of the system and provide some immediate feedback. So one hit, the message is spoken or populates the message window um, immediately. So I'm going to generate a quick message here. I want eat. I want to eat. Because we have the pronouns um, on our left, that helps me to generate a grammatically correct sentence, moving from left to right. Um, and 
the language that's available to the right is um, core vocabulary. So these are part of a vocabulary set that are usable across contexts, across activities, and make up approximately 80% of the language that we use in everyday life. Fringe vocabulary is the counterpart to core vocabulary. We mentioned that core vocabulary is this subset of a few hundred words that represents about 80% of our language utilized across contexts, environments, activities. Fringe vocabulary are more specialized words. Frequently we can think of them as nouns, and these are going to be words that are highly motivating, highly personal for the individual expressing their um, specific interests or related to um, kind of narrow topics within academia, not as broadly useful across contexts and environments, but they do carry a lot of meaning um, and enable the individual to express um, specific interests and um, participate fully in academia or work life where those um, highly specialized words are going to be needed. So we do want to include um, these motivating specialized words on the device as well. If I wanted to make some additional fringe vocabulary, vocabulary available, um, I could move to the transition page. Here, I can generate a similar message, but um, I'm going to be able to change the verb tense or add a little bit more detail. I want Eight. So here you can see it took me two hits now to get to every button um, and this is part of the motor planning aspect in that when I click on the first button it opens up into a page but the location, um, the placement of the button remains consistent and then it pops me back out to the home page to restart my motor plan to find my next word as soon as I've generated that message. For full access to a variety of fringe vocabulary and verb tenses, I'm going to want to um, load up the full version. Um, and here, it's going to give me some different options than I had before. So by clicking on the pronoun I, it's going to open up into um, some pronoun plus verb combinations. Um, and you'll notice want. that want remains in the same location on the um, when you access it through the pronoun page as it does on the home page. So by clicking on eat, I now have the full option of verb tenses available. And you might notice that the verb um, have remained consistently located, um, paralleling or mirroring the verb placement on the home page. I'm going to be able to quickly and easily generate a grammatically correct sentence by clicking on to eat here. To eat. It pops me back out to the home page so I can restart my motor plan to go back in and make the food selection, which is now available to me as categorically organized fringe vocabulary across the top of the page. I'm feeling a little snacky. I want to eat a pretzel. Pretzel. Um, so now my message is generated in the top window and I can click on the message window to speak it. I want to eat pretzel. So although there is a wealth of both core and fringe vocabulary within um, Lamp Words for Life full, um, I might want to add in some of my favorite foods that weren't programmed in for me. So I'm going to clear this message out and go into Eat, select Snacks, and um, edit this page. To do that, I go up to Menu, click Edit Page, and because um, PRC wants to preserve the integrity of the um, base Lamp Words for Life page, I'm going to need to go into Library and create a duplicate of this page by copying the vocabulary and creating an edit editable version. So I'm going to select Copy Vocab. I'd like to copy the full version, and I'm going to give this my name. Um, Alexis and full to know that this is a copy of the full. So now I have my editable page and I go up to menu, edit page, and I can add in my new word selection in any of these blank pages. I really want cheese dip with my pretzel. So I select a blank button and create a new button. I'm going to add the name first. 
And from here, I can change the pronunciation, select an image of my favorite cheese dip, perhaps, that's uploaded onto the camera, or import an image from import an image from the image library of my favorite cheese dip that might be saved on the iPad, um, or select an image that's available. Um, the Unity language system by PRC uses MinSpeak, um, which is a proprietary set of symbols. Um, and as you can see um, just from the short introduction that we've had so far, these symbols are very realistic cartoon drawings. So I'm going to um, just search all categories rather than selecting a specific one and see what comes up. So nothing came up for cheese dip, sadly but there is a nice symbol of cheese here. So I'm going to use that as my temporary holding image and then maybe at a later time take a picture of um, my favorite cheese dip and really customize it further by adding that. Um, I can also, from here, adjust the um, size, space, color, um, placement of the text within this button, but I'm going to keep it as it is so it remains consistent. I can also add additional actions to this button beyond just speaking the message. But I'm going to save it as is. I'm done with my editing. Um, so now I want I can to eat. generate a customized message. Cheese dip. I want to eat cheese dip. Um, in addition to customizing the vocabulary, um, adding in really meaningful and motivating fringe vocabulary for the user, um, there are a variety of other customizations that are available. The Fitzgerald color key is utilized within LAMP Words for Life, so we have our pronouns in yellow, verbs in green, but if needed, you could change the background color either of the buttons or the words. Um, you could input high contrast images, um, and all of these are going to um, help with the accessibility features for the device. Um, something that's great about Lamp Words for Life is the variety of voices that comes available um, with the app. Um, you can also record your voice um, to speak certain messages. Um, if you wanted to have um, kind of a personalized introduction on there, you could record um, whole sentence chunks at a time underneath the buttons. Um, there's also a variety of access methods that are available. Um, so given a switch interface or a specialized case, um, switch access, um, two-step switch scanning is a potential access method. Um, touch enter, so depressing the button and touch exit, um, activating the button upon release are also available options. Um, at this time, eye gaze and head pointing are not particularly viable options with this app, but we are um, hoping that those become um, more feasible options in the future. Um, if something um, like head pointing or eye gaze was necessary and Lamp Words for Life was the best language fit for the um, individual using AAC, then Lamp Words for Life is also available on a dedicated device um, put out by PRC and um, both head gaze and eye pointing are available on that. Um, another helpful feature that is easily accessible within LAMP Words for Life and comes in handy when um, providing training to not only the individual using the AC but the individuals in their life who should be communicating with them in their language is this word finder option available up in the menu. Semantic compaction, as I discussed, does enable the individual to communicate really quickly and efficiently once the system is learned, but it's not necessarily as intuitive of a system as um, strictly categorical or activity-based organization. So having this word finder can help the individual to, in, during that initial training period, or help them um, facilitate communication with individuals who are supporting the AAC user. So I really want to talk about going to the beach, but I'm not quite sure where that word would be. I access my word finder in the menu, and search for beach, and it gives me step-by-step -step instructions of how to get there. Um, when I click on the icon pathway, it actually grays everything out and enables me to practice following that pathway beach. and generate the word that I was hoping to say. Um, there are a variety of other features available within Lamp Words for Life, um, customizability, um, 
access methods. Um, so for more information about the app, you can take a look in the written description of this video as well as access additional resources on the Utah Assistive Technology Program website. Thank you for watching.